And welcome back. We are back with our panel, Bill McEwen, Guillermo Moreno, and Keisha Thomas. Lots to chat about here in the second round. And I want to begin with Gavin's Law. We saw the emotional interview with Susan Gladding. Um, it heads back to the Appropriations Committee this Thursday, where then if it is passed once again, it'll head to the assembly floor. But it seems like a no-brainer here to, to, to get the loophole out of the way in this law amend it, send it to the governor's desk, but what's the reality that it will actually happen? Bill, I'll start with you. It'll go to the governor's desk yeah. and I would expect that he would sign it because... But uh, will it get there? Sure. Do you think our state lawmakers well, first are ready of all, to change their No, minds? you talk about appropriations committee. There's no cost involved in this. So this came out of the committee that it was on, which is judiciary and that's where the key test was. But Guillermo, it started with Susan Gladding having to change the minds of one committee just to go back to Sacramento and have the Public Safety Transportation Committee to listen and then pass it unanimously. So she changed minds. Can lawmakers filter this through? I hope so. I mean, this should really be, a, you know, a bipartisan effort. They should really rally together and do the right thing. You know, no voter is going to look at this and say, yeah, I, I think we should just leave it the way it is. Don't pass it. You know, I, I agree with Bill. Yeah, it's, but it's, it's not going to be up to us voters, though. It, you know, I think it, it's really going to be up But the, to the Democratic power has already yeah. signed off on it. Yeah, they signed Knowing off on it. Knowing the way the Capitol works, the decision's been made. The decision's been made. But again, um, you know, they, they seem to think, Assemblyman Jim Patterson seems to think there's still a, a tough road here. This, this is not a done deal. Um, like you seem to think it is, Bill, but... Keisha. I've been watching the Capitol for a long time, yeah. and when the Democrats say this deal's going through, it's going through. So you feel confident it's a done deal? I think it's a done deal. You think it's a done oh, deal? yeah, I think it's a done deal. Okay. It's the right thing to do. Who's going to want to be on the wrong side of this? Right. Because, yeah, because it matters to voters. It matters. Right. It matters to voters, but again... We've seen things. You know people that want to be rogue kill voluntarily? I don't know those people. I don't know those people, but we have seen some unusual things at the state capitol, right? Well, I'll give you that. All right. You'll give me that. Uh, I want to move on to the war of words. Uh, we saw it. Uh, Keisha, I'll come straight to you. Okay. Um, Terry Sladek, is there any way, does the lawsuit intimidate the school board or the district at all? What lawsuit? The lawsuit that he is threatening to sue if the censure is not lifted because he's saying a judge did not hear this case and you guys aren't judge and jury on the school board. We are, and that's the bottom line. Um, I understand that the judge didn't hear the case, but the fact that he's not behaving appropriately for a trustee speaks, speaks volumes. Our job is to protect kids and our employees, and he's absolutely not doing that. Bill, you listen to this. You're very in tune to the school district and, and the school board meetings. When you see what Terry Sladek is wanting to do, does he have a case? Well, I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. I mean, he has counsel that says... They improperly Where censored him, counsel? hold on, and the trustees say, our legal counsel said everything we did is copacetic, so that's, that's for court to decide. My observation on this is this whole thing is deterring from what should be the goal, which, which is, is to make Fresno yeah. Unified a better place for mm -hmm. kids and families. In addition, this is total nonsense about I'm going to get 12,000 bucks from some 16-year-old girl. Mm -hmm. I mean, my goodness. Is End it. End it, please. This is a horrible, horrible look. And he says something like, well, the kid has to learn the consequences. 16-year-olds mm. make mistakes all the time. Go to the courthouse. It was a handwritten thing that was filled out clearly without any advice, clearly without legal counsel. If she'd had a lawyer, they would have, first of all, made it in the name of her mother, listed right. her as a Jane Doe. Instead, she put her name right on the top of it. Yeah. Uh, Guillermo, I'll come to you. Terry Sladek says the censure is preventing him from doing his job. True or false? Probably is. <laughs> it, it probably is. Let's just let's just be honest. But okay. I don't see why I, I, you all I, I just get along. I, I can't. I can't. <laughs> just get I can't along. It's for the How kids. How is it preventing him from doing his job it's, when he has somebody walking with him every day? We have to pay somebody to walk with him so that he doesn't walk around and hurt kids, grab them by their clothes, and 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 then turn around. You honestly and, think he's going to do that again? Did you? Again. Okay. Do you know? And. 
I'm going to move forward. And let's just get, 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 get back to work. Get and, back to no, work. No, no, no. And threaten F U S D. Get get to work. You cannot leave him alone. Just, just get Is to there, work. Has there been any issues of Terry Sladek um, not having his escort? I've heard there was evidence uh, from one um, speaker yesterday that they said that he's not uh, walking with an escort. He what he is walking with an escort. Okay. Now an LCAP meeting is an open meeting. Okay. It's to the public. Okay. Now he can go in there and he can present himself as a trustee. He can't run the meetings, but he can present himself as a trustee because it's an open meeting. So you're not gonna you're not gonna even consider lifting the censure at all. Absolutely not. Okay. But is it preventing from him doing his job? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Mm -mm. Okay. The recall effort. I'll, Bill, I'll let you punctuate this. Will that, it happen? That is a very steep hill to climb. It's very expensive. A lot of s signatures required. And let's be honest. One reason Fresno Unified was allowed to get in the shape that it's in is because people didn't pay attention. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people do not pay attention to the school district. They're not like me and Keisha where we're focused on it quite a bit of the time. I want to finish with this. Grizzly Fest shuts down this week. They couldn't come to terms with the city of Fresno. They said that they're going to bring it back at some point, bigger and better than ever. California Food Expo, formerly known as the Fresno Food Expo, that shut down as well. These are still major events that brings in revenue to the city, uh, no matter how you look at it. It was bringing in revenue over the years to the city. Why do these things keep shutting down? Can you I, show stuff with you? I, I think over time what's happened is that the performances that they get are deteriorating. They're not bringing in people that we really want to see. That's you, plain and simple. Is Fresno bored? Are the are the uh, residents bored with these events? They're not coming? Absolutely. I don't think it's the Fresno yeah, yeah. It's it's the organizers. It's all about money. You know, the organizer wants to make a lot of money. It should have never been at Woodward Park. That thing should never be north of Shaw. It should be in downtown. Should downtown be a business. Chancy it should I agree be. totally. I agree. We you know, I live in downtown. We need the money. We need the business. That's where it should be. I guarantee you Chuck Chancey would have made him a great deal to bring that back. Bill, ten seconds. And on the Food Expo, it's kind of a mystery to me, but what I surmise is it served its purpose. It gave a lot of exposure to the Valley food industry, and you'll note, once again, we couldn't just call it the Fresno Food Expo. California. We're so inferior, we had to call it the California Food Expo, and that was the end. All right, got to end it there. Thank you guys so much. Thank Good you stuff. for having us. Still to come, six weeks until the California primary. That means the clock is ticking for voters in Fresno to select the next mayor, and why the census will not play a factor in that. The executive director of the Leadership Council for Justice and Accountability, Veronica Garibet, will join me next.